Hi, if you're a lover of all things spooky and eerie, then Untold True Crime Horror is the perfect storytelling podcast for a spine-tingling experience. As you tune in to this petrifying horror experience, do not forget to subscribe, as your nightmares are about to get a whole lot scarier. There used to be a pond about half a mile away from my old house that I would commonly go fishing in. It was nicknamed Daryl's Pond. I still have no idea who Daryl was or why it was called that, but nobody owned it, so people would once in a blue moon go fishing there as well. It was usually me by myself, though. I had dug a pole into the ground where I would tie a noose to and from my small kayak. I'd say it was about 3 in the afternoon when I rode out to the middle of the pond, the sweet spot for getting a decent catch. There was another person coming out from the trees. I waved at him and gave him a smile. He hopped into a small boat floating by the edge of the pond and began to row over to me. As he got close enough where trying to speak to him wouldn't come off as obnoxious, I gave him a friendly, perfect day, isn't it? Yes, absolutely, he said. He didn't say anything after that, and I started to feel a bit awkward, as if I were obligated to keep some kind of conversation rolling now. So, uh, you come out here to throw some lines? I asked. No, I don't actually fish. Oh. Well, it's never a bad day to relax on the pond, I said. He continued to row closer to me, until his boat collided with mine, creating a big thud. I was genuinely uncomfortable now. I didn't feel threatened, just weirded out. I was only 24 years old. This guy looked like he was late 40s or 50s. There was an awkward silence. I tried to just act like I was focused on trying to make a catch, but by now that wasn't even on my mind. This guy was weird. I didn't know what he wanted, and I was uncomfortable being so close to him. I felt him looking at me, or at least in my direction, as I faced halfway to the opposite direction of him. I took a quick glance to my right. Yeah, he was staring at me. I decided to be ballsy and lock eye contact with him. After about four seconds, he looked away. So, uh, where are you from? I asked him. Up there. He pointed behind himself, in the direction of the woodsy hill leading past the dirt road. Oh, you live by Suffolk? I asked. Uh, no. No, I'm not, he said. What made you decide to come out here? I said. Why not? I continued to try and uncomfortably fill the awkward silences that kept coming up. His responses were dry. He didn't contribute anything to what was barely a conversation. He just sat there not doing anything with half a smile on his face, looking either at me or in my general direction throughout. I was creeped out. My heart was racing at this point. I'd go as far as saying that I was nervous for my life. We were surrounded by trees in all directions in the middle of a pond. I started to row a bit closer to land, but in a very low-key kind of way, trying to play it off as me just trying to find a better spot to find some fish. I was horrified when I saw he was following me. <sighs> what a great day, huh? I felt a shake in my voice. I got close enough to the edge of the pond where I finally told the man, I think I'm going to call it a day. I turned to see his reaction. He was still staring at me, but his smile was gone now. I can't let you leave, he said. He lifted his flannel to expose a handgun sticking out of his jeans pocket. As soon as I could process what I was looking at, I dove out of the boat for land, ran the whole half mile uphill through the woods back to my house, and locked every door and window as soon as I made it home. I pulled down the blinds to the dining room window, leaving it open just a crack for peeking outside undetected. It started to get dark out, and I left every light in the house off, still peeking out to the front yard, making sure I wasn't followed. The time came when I finally decided I wasn't followed. I realize now, like you, that not calling the police immediately was a huge mistake. I kept my bedroom windows open to let the room air out. My bedroom was on the second floor, so I wasn't worried about being watched through the window. About half an hour after shutting the light and falling under the covers, 
I heard the sound of leaves crunching from outside. I sat up to hear it more clearly. It was definitely something walking around out there. Normally I would assume it was a deer or a bear, but after what just happened, I, I was still in paranoia mode. I sat up as still as a statue, except for my shaking out of fear, waiting as the sounds of the steps stopped. Hey buddy, you up there? Are you trying to sleep? Sorry, I didn't mean to wake you. I felt like a hundred pounds just fell directly onto my chest. It was the same voice. I knew it right away. I didn't make a sound. I crept out of the room quietly downstairs to the kitchen and grabbed the phone, practically crawling on my way out to avoid being seen through the open blinds. I called 911 like I should have earlier in the temporary safety of my bedroom. I made sure to whisper into the phone as I was still hoping that he hadn't yet heard or spotted me. Twenty minutes felt like an hour as I sat behind my bed, waiting for the police to arrive in constant fear that I would hear glass breaking from downstairs or a thud on the back door, or even just a voice again from down below my window outside. The police did a thorough investigation of the property in nearby woods, turning up nothing. They suggested I stay with a friend or a family member for a few days, and so I did. I never heard from or saw the man again, but I still moved a month later. I couldn't deal with the constant fear and paranoia of being watched through my windows. I feel much more comfortable fishing out by the bay now.